well, the video will show their uh, hip hypocritical stances for nearly two years. That your distortions, your lies, your half-baked quotes, your technicalities, your deviant methodology, your polluted methodology will not go unanswered. We know by necessity that creed can only be based or derived from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah. So what I want to do is, as you can see on screen, it states that basically in Islam, Aqeedah refers or its reference to knowledge which are from Allah authentically, meaning information from Allah and his messenger, and which the Muslim must believe, or it's obligatory for the Muslim to believe in his heart, which is acknowledgement of the truth of Allah and his messenger. So aqidah is knowledge which is authentic from Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's obligatory that every Muslim should believe this in his heart, okay? Acknowledge this in his heart, which is uh, affirmation and confirmation which Allah and his messenger have brought. So key point here, aqidah can only be derived from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah. There is no other sources that can be used to derive creed for the religion of Al-Islam. A hadith in Sahih Muslim, uh, which mentions about obeying the ruler even if he flogs you back and takes your wife. Well, quite clearly, Ibn Zubayr radiallahu anhu revolted, kharaja, he revolted. And he mentioned Hussein ibn Ali revolted. The best of the people of Iraq and their scholars revolted against Hajjad. And Bani Umayyah, oh sorry, the people of Medina after Karbala took place, they revolted against Bani Umayyah. Imams of the Salaf are revered, subhanAllah al-Azim. And they lived during a blessed period which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bore testimony of their um, golden age, you know, the three generations. And we revere the Imams of the Salaf. But to note, to the box headed Salafis, their statements are not revelation. And I can say this without any hesitation. They take the statements of the Salaf like revelation. It's all in relation to obviously authentic reports from the Sunnah. Islam, O people of Islam, قاتلوهم, fight them. Fight who? Hajjaj. Shabbi send this. Oh, hold on. I thought you were supposed to you know, take him by the hand and take him behind closed doors and advise him privately. They are deriving creed from a report from a successor, okay? It's not from the Quran and it's not from the authentic Sunnah, okay? You give me an equivalent to what I've given you. You give me an equivalent from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah. You can't and you know you can't. Creed, al aqidah can only be derived from the Quran and Sunnah. I'm gonna keep emphasizing that point because it's very important. Because these are the same people that say the Quran and the Sunnah, the Quran and the authentic Sunnah. But when it comes to this, all of a sudden, they have sort of, I'm not saying it's tabdi, I'm not making tabdi, but they've kind of innovated a new source of deriving creed. That when the Prophet was asked, shall we fight them? The Prophet says, قَالَ لَا مَا صَلُّوا No, providing they pray. وَفِي بَعْدِهَا And in other narrations, إِلَّا أَن تَرَوْ كُفْرٌ بُوَاحًا عِنْدَكُمْ فِيهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ بُرْحَانٌ That no, unless you see clear kufr, and upon you is Allah's uh, burhan. That the madhab of Abi Hanifa, is famous in fighting against the oppressive rulers. Okay? The mother of Abi Hanifa. No, they haven't. They haven't got it from the Quran or the authentic Sunnah. So where have they got this from, Haji? Rather, it's an athar from a tabi'i. It's a report from a successor. As you can see, it's highlighted in yellow, you can't hide it, that Imam Malik gave a fatwa to Rabal with Muhammad, Muhammad bin Nafs al -Zakiyya. So. No, it's not from the Quran, nor is it not from the authentic Sunnah. Okay. You know, the, the, the statements of the Imams of the Salaf are not wahi from the sky. Okay. You cannot do iltizam of these uh, statements of the Salaf and derive creed from it. You understand? You can't do that. Like I said before, and I will consistently repeat this in this video, that creed can only be derived from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah. Lastly, they asked Ibrahim and Naka'i, and la'an al-hajjaj, and cursing hajjaj. But remember, you're not supposed to criticize the rulers. So they asked me about cursing hajjaj. And some of the transgressors. فَقَالَ أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى يَقُولُ 
Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Ala la'natullahi ala zalimin, that alas Allah's curse be upon the oppressors. Okay? I've rejected this because there is nothing authentic proven to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that confirms this. For us to have creedal belief, i'tiqad, we have to have authentic narrations. Now, so far, we see the Salaf. Books of the Salaf, books of the Salaf. We're quoting ulama that show you what the Salaf actually did. Um, you know, they're not infallible, they can make mistakes, so we can disagree with them. At the end of the day, you know, they are men. Kullu yukhud wa yurud minhu. That everyone's statement is uh, taken and rejected. Rather, they were calling the people to, you know, rabal, rabal. And we proved it from Bidayah wa Nihaya. And we proved it from Kitab al-Iman by Ibn Abi Shayba. And we proved it from, from Istithqar of Ibn Abi Dabbar. And we proved it from Tafsir al-Qurtubi, from Imam al-Qurtubi. You could bring me a thousand, give me five, give me ten, give me twenty. You cannot derive creed from their statement, no matter how much they agreed upon it. Okay? You can't derive creed from their statements. It should be easy, shouldn't it? You guys are upon the Quran and the Sunnah and we are the safe sect. We're going to Jannah. Everyone else is going to Jahannam with your Yahudi trait, okay, that you hold. Okay, so it should be easy. Presented from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah. Why are you relying on a report of a Tabi'i? And many Imams of the Salaf, yes, we're not denying it, but it's Mubalaghat. Okay, it's exaggeration. It states, وَخَرَجَ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْقُرَّةَ That the reciters revolted. Okay? The reciters revolted. How many revolted? 4,000 from the men revolted. Who were what? هُمِ خِيَارُ tabi'un. They were the best from the tabi'un. 4,000 revolted against Hajjaj who were what? The best from the tabi'un. And what else? وَفُقَهَاءَهُمْ And their jurists. So the best of the tabi'un and the reciters, 4,000 of them, rebelled against Hajjaj فَقَاتِلُوهُ And they fought Hajjaj مَا عَبْدُ الرَّحْمَانِ بِنْ مُحَمَّدْ بِنْ أَشْعَفْ And they fought under his banner. You can't prove this authentically from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. And now that we've accepted that, okay, we've accepted this together. You bring me a thousand imams from the Salaf, or two thousand imams from the Salaf, or three thousand imams from the Salaf, or four thousand, or five thousand, or ten thousand. No matter what they say, okay. No matter what they say, okay. Oh yeah, we accept it, or we, you know, we affirm it, or whoever rejects it, the Jahmi. You know now, after laying out that foundation together, and after we've, you know, gradually, gradually built upon that, you would agree with me now that this belief we can reject. We can reject with no hesitation. It's not proven from the Prophet Muhammad And as I mentioned at the start, in order to derive creed, it has to be authentic from the authentic Sunnah and the Quran, or the Quran and the authentic Sunnah. So the same thing that you constantly hear them repeat over and over and over and over again. What about for Induri Badakhruqa for Uhida Malik? That even if he flogs your back and takes your wealth? What was I saying? That this is when he flogs your back and takes your wealth, in relation to the haq. Is this authentically proven from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah? Okay. Leave the Imams of the Salaf and what they held, etc. I'm just asked, we're, we're, we're having a clean slate, we've set a foundation, and now we're following up on that. Okay, and we're moving forward. Okay, and we are having a academic, fruitful discussion. Can you prove? Okay. Can you prove authentically from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and your proudness in terms of Quran and the Sunnah, you ain't got no authentic report. You ain't got no Sunnah. You ain't got no hadith for this. You is nothing marfu'ah to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I challenge you to bring me an authentic report from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam authentically because we can only derive creed from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah. Ibn Hazm, subhanallah, mentions the following names of those who permitted rebelling against an unjust Muslim ruler. We are presenting this to show you that you cannot take this author and use it as creed, regardless how many of the Imams of the Salaf uh, oppose those and call them. They're not, their statements are not revelation from the skies. We don't accept it. And it's exaggeration. We've got the right to say that. Exaggeration is an extreme. There's an ijma on this, okay? There's an ijma on this. Now, what we say is, that any Imam of the Salaf that had an opposing view to this, they're wrong. They're incorrect. Because they haven't got Nas. Quran was Sunnah. Aqeedah can only be taken from the Quran was Sunnah. Authentic Sunnah. You can't derive creed from other things other than that. Scholars that you revere, scholars that you respect, 
scholars that you honour, and we honour as well, but we've got the right to reject, but you take their words uh, like gospel, and you take the imams, statements of the imams and salaf like revelation. For us to have religious belief on, look at this, for us to have religious belief on, and to believe in it, can only be proven with authentic narrations to the noble messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. Bring me all of those statements from the salaf. Bring me whoever you want. Bring me whoever you want from the salaf. Bring me anyone like Al Ajuri. Bring him as well. No problem. No problem. Bring me anyone. Bring me anyone from the Salaf. Or even after them. That said, oh, the Imams of the Salaf, they had a belief in this, they accepted this. So what? <laughs> so what? Like Sheikh Rabi says, that it's not proven from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi We can only take creed or have belief in or have religious belief in in things that are proven according to the uh, authentic narrations. So I'm not going to be the person that's going to, you're going to throw a salaf at me or throw a mountain salaf and say, well, what about this then? What about this? So what? <laughs> so what? I will ask you now, where do we base creed from? You know, our religion, our beautiful religion, Al-Islam. What are our sources to derive creed? Just, just I want to ask you that question. Just, ask, just answer that question for me, okay? Just simple. It's not a difficult question. It's not, you know, where I'm trying to trap you. Where do we base our creed from? What sources do we use to base our creed? I hope, and I'm sure, and I'm confident that you would say the beliefs or the beliefs of Al-Islam are from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah. And I'll ask you another question on top of that now. Okay, I'll ask you a question. So now that we've agreed, we all, we're in agreement, uh, as brothers, we're in agreement that our deen, in order for us to derive our beliefs, our usul, our fundamentals, our creed, our beliefs, that is from the Quran and the Sunnah. Now, if I follow up on that and I say, okay, my brothers, okay, no problem. We, we're in agreement, subhanAllah. And is it possible, according to Ali Sunnah wal Jama'ah and its scholars, that we could take creed from a weak report from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Leave a tabi'i. Leave a tabi'i. Leave the salaf. Okay, I'm just asking you a question. A weak report, a, a hadith or hadith, da'ifa, maktu'a, mursalan. Can we accept that as creed in the religion of Al-Islam, according to the scholars from the past and to the contemporary scholars of today, the one, even the recent ones that have passed away? Can we accept that? I'm sure you would answer, no. We can't accept creed from a hadith which is weak, which is da'if maktua, which is mursal, etc. We can't accept creed from that, can we? You will say, yeah, that's true. And now we're at a point of agreement yet again. So we've cleaned the slate. We haven't discussed any, uh, you know, particular beliefs, etc., etc. We're just uh, we're just having a conversation and just agreeing. Uh, our foundations of how we derive creed. So we know now, based upon you know taking a step back and sitting, or even you know communicating via Zoom because you know we're in the lockdown, and we're asking you know the questions to each other, and we're obviously answering the questions honestly and without any uh, duress or any you know uh, point of of contention. Now I ask you. Now getting back to the matter at hand. This belief, this creed of belief, just be honest with me. Can you do that? Can you prove it from the authentic sunnah? The ones who are sincere and the ones who are genuine and the ones that, are, that, that put Islam in front of their eyes without any cultish uh, connections or affiliations, you would, uh, you would answer back, respond truthfully, sincerely that you don't. You don't have it. The, the Imams of the Salaf statements are not wahi. Prove it from the Quran and the Sunnah. I'll take back my words. The, the goalposts can't change, mate. The goalposts cannot change. The Quran and the authentic Sunnah, khalas. That's where it starts. That's where it ends for creed. It cannot be derived from any tabi'i or any Imams from the Salaf only the Quran and the Sunnah. What happened to? We want to know what the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said. Well, in this regard, you don't really care, do you? You don't care. So hold on, the double standard, the hypocrisy is clear as night and day.
الله مستعان الله مستعان سلام عليكم يا سعاد الله يوصل على نبينا محمد يا ابي